Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to be working through questions 11 to 15 of the Intermediate Maths Challenge from 2021. But I actually don't think you should watch this video, because I've put all of these questions and more into a free online course called Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge. In that course, you can work through all of these problems, you can uh, check the answer, you can watch the video solution, but as well as the video solution, there's also a short video hint before each question that will really help you get into the problem and give you the best chance of solving it for yourself. So I'll put a link to that course in the description below. You can go over there and sign up now, totally free, and there are no ads or distractions like there are on YouTube either. So I do really think that's the best way to prepare for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, but of course if you'd rather watch the uh, solutions here on YouTube, you're also uh, very well welcome. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it really helps me get this content out there. Otherwise, we will uh, get on with the questions now. Question 11, we've got the line with equation y equals 2x plus 3. That's reflected in the x-axis, and we want to know what the new line's equation is. So uh, we just do a rough sketch here. You don't have uh, rulers and things in the maths challenge papers, um, but it only needs to be a very rough sketch of this line. If you know the form of the equation y equals uh, mx plus c, you'll know that this is a line that has... Uh, c is the y-intercept, so that would be 3, and it's going to have a gradient of 2. So every time it goes along 1, it's going to go uh, up 2, and the line is going to look uh, something a bit like that. So, you know, when I get to 1 here, it's going to be at 5, for example. You didn't need to put this level of detail in. Um, but if I reflect that in the x-axis, right, so uh, this point is going to stay exactly where it is, and we're going to get a reflection uh, something like this. So it's going to uh, go through minus 3 here, and we can see you know, by the reflection here, 1, it will get down to minus 5, so the gradient is going to be minus 2. You might be able to see that without actually putting in a particular point. Um, so using this same form, we've got a gradient of minus 2, and the y-intercept is minus 3, uh, so we get y equals um, minus 2x minus 3. And uh, so you do just need to know the form of uh, the straight lines here, which is something we will look at in the, um, in the full course uh, as well. Uh, go for gold in the Intermediate Maths Challenge. Andrew calculates that 40% of 50% of x is equal to 20% of 30% of y, where x is not equal to 0, and then we want to know which of the following is true. Firstly, let's just notice that it says x is not equal to 0 here, because you could have, if x were 0 and y were also 0, then this would be satisfied and sort of all of these answers would be true. So we're looking for a non-trivial or non-zero uh, solution here. So 40% of something is 0.4 times that thing, and 50% of something is 0.5 times that thing. So I've got 0.4 times 0.5 times x here. Um, that's going to be equal to, well, 20% of 30% of y. That's 0.2 um, times 0.3 times y. There are different ways you could sort out uh, the algebra at the end here. We've got some decimals that are a bit awkward. So one thing we could do is we could you know, multiply the decimals together and then just do some division. You might just, even before you've written this down, like work out 40% to 50% by saying 10% to 50% is 5%, so 40% to 50% will be 20%. You know, 0 0.4 times 0 0.5 is 0.2x, say. Um, so you could get to like 0.2x here, and then 0.2 times 0.3 times y is 0.06y. And what I'd do at this step is either, um, you know, just do y is 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.96, um, but actually, uh, so you could work that out, or uh, just to get rid of the decimals, right? So if you've got awkward decimals, just multiply both sides uh, by 100 here, right? If I do 0 0.2 times 100, I get 20x, and if I do 0 0.06 times 100, I get 6y. We could have just done that at the start, by the way, you know, if you could times this by 100, it's like timesing 0.4 times 10 and 0.5 times 10, that will give you 4 times 5, which is 20. And the right-hand side by 100 is 0 0.2 times 10 times 0 0.3 times 10, uh, which is 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay. Um, there's loads of actual simplifications here right, as well. If you notice this was 0.2x, you might just cancel the 0.2 with this side or something. Anyway, I've done it this way. And once we've got to 20x equals 6y, we look at the forms of the answers, and we see they're all y equal to something. Uh, so I just need to make y the subject here, so let's put the y on the... Uh, left hand side, 6y is equal to 20x, divide both sides by 6 and we get y is equal to 20x over 6, and that simplifies down to 10x over 3, uh, dividing top and bottom by 2, and uh, then the answer there is e. What's the remainder when 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is divided by 9? Now what we don't want to do here really is just to multiply these numbers together, uh, that's going to be quite inefficient, although 
it would be one way of solving the problem. It might just cost you a bit of time. Uh, and divisibility tricks are things we should always be looking out for, and we cover those a lot more in the Go for Gold uh, courses, both in the previous Junior Maths Challenge one and in the uh, Intermediate Maths Challenge one that you can upgrade to from this course. Um, and one of the divisibility tests is divisibility by nine, uh, which maybe is what we would obviously think of going for here. And that says that if you sum the digits uh, and it's and you get a multiple of nine, then the number is a multiple of nine. But one plus two plus three plus four plus five is 15. It's not a multiple of nine. So neither of these are multiples of nine. But there's also the divisibility test for divisibility by three, right? So the fact that when I do one plus two plus three plus four plus five and I get 15, the fact that this is a multiple of three means that this number one, two, three, four, five uh, is a multiple of three. Five, four, three, two, one has the same digits. So five, four, three, two, one. These are both multiples uh, of three. Okay. So when I multiply them together, you know, one, two, three, four, five is going to be three times something, and five, four, three, two, one is going to be three times something. So if I do this times this, it's going to have a three times three in it. So it's going to be a multiple of nine. That means the remainder when you divide by nine is going to be zero. The diagram shows a large square divided into squares of three different sizes, and we want to know what percentage of the large square is shaded. This is quite a tricky example of a question like this, because often in these questions we can just find a smallest square, divide everything into those small squares, and then sort of just count them up. That is possible here, but you have to go to really, really small squares to do that, and uh, so fine if you've managed to do that. Um, but probably that's not the way I'd go with this one. Uh, so I think I'd look at the outside here and say, well, I've got five squares, so let's just make the side length uh, of this square five. Actually, another good choice here would be just to make it a 10 by 10 square, because that's quite easy to write as a percentage. But we'll go five uh, by five. So each of these squares uh, is just a one by one square. So I've got here eight of them. So I've got eight units that are shaded. And when I look at the sort of inside square here, this one uh, is going to be three by three. Okay, because I've just taken off one unit here and here from the full five. And if we think about how much of that inside square uh, is shaded, uh, well, let's say I took these two um, shaded parts and put them in here, uh, then you could see that exactly three quarters of that inside sh uh, square uh, would be shaded in total. So the number of squares we've got is eight plus three quarters times uh, the three by three square, which is nine. So we've got uh, uh, eight plus 27 over four. So if I write uh, eight as 32 over four, you can see that the number of squares shaded is going to be 59 over four. Now, uh, this was a five by five uh, square. So I want to sort of now um, say, divide this by uh, 25, if you like. Um, but um, what I uh, could do instead, then, well, I suppose dividing by 25 is the same as um, multiplying it by 1 over 25. So perhaps uh, it's not too hard to write it down like this, actually. And then multiplying these together, I get 59 uh, over 100. And so we can see that the percentage here is uh, 59%. Of course, if we'd started by making this this a 10 by 10 uh, square, we'd have just got that the area is uh, 59 straight away. Um, so that would also have been um, a uh, a good option. Um, we would have had eight two by, you know, these would now be four units squared that have been two by two squares. So we'd have got 32. And the middle part here would have been three quarters uh, of a six by six, which is three quarters of um, of, of 36, which gives us 32 plus 27, which is 59. So maybe uh, actually making it a 10 by 10 square was useful there. But either way, uh, we can get to the answer, and it's B, 59%. I've got a tricky question here. It says Patrick drives from P to Q an average speed of 40 miles an hour, and his drive back from Q to P is an average speed of 45 miles per hour and takes two minutes less. Now, a couple of things to notice here. Uh, the speeds are in miles per hour and the time is in minutes here. So we definitely want to convert either the speeds to uh, miles per minute or two minutes into hours. So you could say two minutes is one thirtieth of an hour. I think actually what I'm gonna do here is say instead that 40 miles per hour is 40 over 60 
which is two thirds, okay, right, uh, 40 over 60 miles per minute, if you like, and uh, so that's two thirds. Uh, let's write MPM, not really standard, but let's write MPM for miles per minute, and 45 miles per hour. That means you're going to go 45 over 60 uh, or three quarters of a mile per minute. And now I can just say everything's in miles and minutes here. So we've got speed equals distance over time. And as we're going to be thinking about the time here, let's rearrange this to give uh, time uh, equals distance over speed. And you can use the, um, uh, some people like to write this as like a, a, a triangle, um, speed equals distance over time, uh, like this or something. So I'm using, I'm crossing out the time here and saying, oh, that's distance over speed. Um, anyway, uh, have you remember that is fine. And so on the way out, the time T is going to be the distance, which we'll just call X, which is the same on the way out as it is on the way back, of course, divided by the speed, uh, which we have got as two thirds. Okay, so uh, dividing by a fraction, you turn the fraction upside down and multiply. So this is three over two X. And on the way back, the time is going to be T minus two. That's X divided by three quarters distance over time, which is four thirds uh, X. Okay, so on the one hand, I've got three over two X is equal to the time. And if I rearrange this one, I've got four over three X plus two uh, is the time. So these are both expressions for the time. So they uh, T that he takes to go uh, on the first leg of the journey. So if I just set these equal to each other, uh, let's uh, write that up here. I've got three over two X is equal to four thirds X plus two. So I just need to say uh, to get X, well, I've got three over two X minus four thirds X is equal to two. If we put these both uh, as sixths, then that's nine sixths X minus eight sixths X is equal to two. So uh, if I just multiply both sides of this equation by six, I just get nine X minus eight X equals two, uh, so 12, and nine X minus eight X is equal to X. So the distance X is equal to 12. You might be able to do this algebra slightly more quickly and efficiently uh, than I've done it there, um, and different ways of you know rearranging things here. Uh, but the idea here is that you want to write down two equations, um, whether you do it in hours or minutes or whatever, uh, make sure it's consistent, eliminate T, and then you'll find the answer. And the answer here then is D12. So I really hope that was useful. Don't forget, I think the best way to prepare for the Intermediate Maths Challenge is to click below and take my totally free online course, Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, where you can work through all of these problems and more, not just with the solutions, but also with video hints to help you get started. So do check that out if you haven't already and share it with your friends. Please do like this video and subscribe to the channel as well. It really helps me get the content out there and I will see you soon.